In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some factoring. Specifically, we're going to be doing two examples where we are going to use grouping to obtain the difference of two squares. I might note that this is going to come in handy if you have four terms. Obviously, the very first thing you should always try is taking out that greatest common factor and then try factor by grouping because that's the most common. However, if you cannot do factor by grouping, you group them together and you cannot get any matching binomial terms, then you have to have another strategy and forcing a difference of two squares sometimes works depending on how the problem is originally written. So in this first example here I've got x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus y squared. If I were to try fact the traditional factor by grouping and putting these two things together, I am not going to get a matching binomial term. So then what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for a perfect trinomial square, perfect square trinomial. And if I can see one in there or a possibility of one combined with that difference of two squares, then I may still be able to factor this. I have a minus right here and a y squared. That's a perfect square. If I take a look at this entire three terms right here, all right, this right here turns out to be a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor this, and I can factor this into an x plus 4 and x plus 4. If I choose to write it as a quantity squared, that's going to give me two perfect squares with a minus sign in between. And so that's the approach that we're going to take on this. So factoring this perfect square trinomial, it will factor into an x plus 4 quantity squared, and then the minus y squared on this end. Now, if you look at this, I have a minus sign. I have two terms that are perfect square roots. So that means I can factor this as the difference of two squares. All right, keeping in mind, I would need to take the square root of this first term and the square root of the second term, write them both with a plus and a minus. So square root of an x plus 4 quantity squared. All right, if you remember that, square root and square undoes each other. So those two things would go away, and I would get an x plus 4. If I did the square root of the y squared, the square root and the square undoes each other, so then I get a y. So they are perfect squares. So then I can write my final answer as the first term, square root, x plus 4, and then plus the second term, and then the first term, x plus 4, the square root of that first term, minus the square root of the second term. All right, so I put these two in different colors because this is the concept of your difference of two squares. When you factor the difference of two squares, you take the square root of each of them and write them with a plus and a minus. So the square root of this was x plus 4. The square root of the y squared was the y. So first term plus the second one, first one minus the second one. And since in this, none of these are like terms, I can't do anything with it. That's all I can do with that particular example. All right, now let's go to a second one. Okay, the second one um, is going to be done basically the same way. However, things are in a different order, so it is going to make a difference. You're going to kind of have to force that perfect square trinomial. All right, so here again, if I were to try factor by grouping, I'm not going to get anything to match. Even if I rearrange the terms, I'm still not getting anything to match. So then what I kind of have to look at are these three terms right here. I've got a b squared plus a 10b minus 25. All right, if I look at these just as it sets right now, okay, all right, that's not a perfect square trinomial. However, if I factor out a negative 1, I can create a perfect square trinomial. <clears throat> and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take these three terms, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. Okay, so when I do that, I'll still have my a squared right there. If I take out a negative 1 from these three terms, I'll have the negative out in front. All right, and then let's go ahead and put a set of parentheses in there. Then that makes this a positive b squared. That would change this term to a minus 10b, and that would change this term to a positive 25. Okay, so let's even write down what we did there. Factored out a negative 1 to create that perfect square trinomial. Okay, 
Now, looking at what you've got at that point, I've got an a squared, I have a minus, and then right here, this will factor into a perfect square binomial. Okay, so this will be a b minus 5 quantity squared. So I'll still have my a squared, and then the minus, and then the b minus 5 quantity squared. I have two terms, they're both perfect squares, and I have a subtraction in there, so this is definitely the difference of two squares. All right, now I'm going to take a look at each of the terms and take the square root of them. So the square root of that a squared is going to give me an a. The square root of the b minus 5 quantity squared is going to give me a b minus 5. <clears throat> now on this one, because my binomial that is squared here comes to the right of this minus sign, and I'm taking the square root of it, and I'm going to be writing this plus this one, and then this minus this one, this is a binomial. I've got to remember that this is a binomial because when I subtract a binomial, I'm going to have to go through and change all the signs. That's probably what makes this one the trickiest out of all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and factor this as the difference of two squares. So I'm going to take the square root of the first one, a, and then let's go ahead and do my plus and minuses in red, plus the square root of the second one, and I am going to keep it in parentheses. All right, not as crucial because this is a plus sign, not as crucial as keeping that together, but just for consistency, keeping that together. All right, then I'm going to write the square root of the first one minus, now, the square root of the second one, keeping in mind it's a binomial, so b minus 5. All right, now here I can drop this set of parentheses because it's going to have no bearing on it whatsoever. Over here, I need to go through and change all those signs because I'm subtracting a quantity. So when I rewrite my final answer here, a plus b minus 5 times a, go through change the signs, minus b plus 5. So this one is a little different because that perfect square trinomial turned out to be on the right hand side when I did that difference of two squares right there. You just got to watch that if you have a binomial there and you are subtracting that quantity, you got to remember to go through and change the signs. Um, so a very specific technique that can only be used if the problem, original problem is set up in such a way that you can form that perfect square trinomial. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.